we'll add them as they go. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining um, this meeting this evening. Um, I am sorry that we are doing it in this format, but we don't really have an alternative at the moment. We want to keep everybody safe, but we do want to talk about this really serious issue uh, that has happened um, in the constituency. So I'm very grateful that all of you have attended this evening. As you will have heard from Dan, there is over 150 people currently here. Um, I'm very pleased to tell you that we've got with us Elizabeth Chapel, who is the uh, borough commander, which well, is commander of four boroughs across South West London, including our own, and Inspector Bob Whitehead, who spoke to us at our previous meeting at two o'clock, giving uh, a number of answers to questions. Kieran Bagawal, who's the head of community services at the London Borough of Merton, Councillor Stephen Alan Brittis, the leader of Merton Council, and Councillor Dave Ward, who is uh, one of our three Colliers Group uh, councillors. My plan for this evening um, is to take as many questions as I can from everybody who's here. I'm going to do that in groups of three. If you could put your name into the chat, um, that would be great, so we know the order to go to people. Um, we did manage to exhaust all the questions at our earlier meeting at two o'clock, and our plan is to do the same. Uh, I'll only call the council if the issues are particularly relevant to them, uh, and we will concentrate uh, uh, for the main part on responses from the police. Um, Dan, over to you if you want to give some advice to people. Oh, no, just, just to say, if you've not used Zoom before, um, the easiest thing to do to make sure you can see that whoever's speaking on full screen is in the top right hand corner you'll see a button that says view and if you click on view and then click on speaker view and uh, then you'll see whoever's speaking in full screen uh, and at the bottom of the screen you'll see a chat function and if you click on chat and if you want to ask a question you just leave your name Hi. in there we make a little list so we get with everybody okay um, uh, uh, Elizabeth, are you okay if we get started, or did you want to say something? Uh, there's, not, there's nothing to say at the moment. I just thank you so much for being in this meeting, Siobhan. It, it's much appreciated. I know how much um, the incident um, last week and other incidents, of course, have, have touched the community. And, and exactly as you said, although not ideal to talk, talk in this way, at least we're talking and that's the very pleasing. So thank you. Thank you for all that. Okay, well thank you Bob. Your second meeting, over to you if you could um, give us um, as much of uh, an information or introduction as you can. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for people who have, have um, dialed in and listening to this. Um, we had a similar conversation with a number of questions being asked um, earlier today and I'm expecting a number of similar questions to come from this one. If I start off with a couple of updates about the crime that did occur. Um, last Tuesday there was a terrible crime that we all know about um, that has been um, in the news, um, that was on the video, that was shared on social media. Um, I'm very careful about what I say about that, mainly because I have no wish to have any negative impact on a trial. So because the person has now been charged with two offences, I don't want to say anything that might consider, be considered prejudicial to the trial. Um, now, what do you do? So, all I can say about that case is that he was arrested um, on that day. Um, we did get him in custody um, fairly quickly. Um, he's currently in, in custody as we speak. Uh, he's been charged with a number of offences and will go to trial at some point in the future. But I'm very aware that what I don't want to do is say anything now that may be considered prejudicial to a trial in the future. Because one of the people who might be on this um, call at the moment might be a future juror for that case. And I wouldn't want to do anything that would be detrimental to that case. So if I come back with anything and say, well, I can't discuss that case because it's sub this, I apologise that I can't give some of the answers that I'd really like to give in a number of cases. But for me, the most important point is ensuring and supporting the, vi the victim survivor in this case and helping her to get a conviction against the person who's done these, these terrible crimes. So that's my primary concern for that side of things and obviously to look after the victim survivor and make sure she's as well looked after as I possibly can um, and don't want to do anything that's prejudicial to the case. Um, if I also come to the second matter that a number of people have commented and talked about, which was on Wednesday morning, there was an allegation that was separate 
and um, had a 10 year old boy who was on his way to school who said that he was attacked on his way to school. Uh, he has told the police uh, that a social worker stopped the attack from happening, pushed the suspect over, uh, and then walked him to school, uh, walked him past the two police officers uh, who were standing on the gate of Singleton School, and then he went into the school and spoke to his um, one of the teachers and told them about what had happened. There were a number of discrepancies in his, what he said that have been investigated and continue to be investigated. Um, but as I say, the discrepancies are being looked into of what he said. Um, I think it's very difficult for me to say too much more on either of those subjects, but I'm hoping that people can understand what I'm saying and what the subliminal message is, so to speak, in both of those cases. Um, I'm now happy to take some questions and um, answer anything that anybody wants to ask. Okay, we're going to take the questions in groups of three. Dan, do we have our first three people? Yeah, um, if we can start with Susanna. Yeah. And then we've got Sibasini and thirdly, Natasha. Okay. Um, Susanna, the floor is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you're quite so, sorry. Don't worry. I'm sure my best is my connection. Um, I just want to know if there will be there more um, policing around the school or even around Collierswood area. Um, because um, I now walk my um, 10 year old road, but I walk him every day and I pick him up in his year six as well. So I would like to give him that independence because obviously going to be moving to secondary school and at the moment I I have to say I don't feel confident in him to go on his own even though it's about 10 12 minutes um walk so will there be more policing around the area or um, officers just something to give a parent a little more reassurance thank you Susanna uh, Sivasani Hi, Sivaseni, do you have a question? Maybe we can come back to Sivaseni. Yeah. Natasha? Natasha Armstrong? Hello? Hello, Natasha. Me? Yes. Hi, good evening everybody. Um, I have several questions and I'm more than happy to email you all of them, Shiva, and separately because I'm sure you don't have enough time to hear all of them. Yeah, my, daughter currently, my daughter currently attends Harris Academy Wimbledon and there is a probation centre right next to there. I'm aware it's not for sex offenders. However, I want to know if there's any plans to relocate this probation centre. It is in such a close proximity of the school and it's very concerning for the children's safety. Thank you, Natasha. Um, Dan, is there one more person or is there any... uh, Yeah, next is uh, Tay or Tina. Tay or Tina. Tay or Tina? Tay, T-A-Y, Tay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I've just got a question which is unrelated to the horrible incident that we talked about. But just generally, because um, I'm a Dundonald resident, and it seems to me in the past month there have been a spate of attacks on secondary school children um, around Dundonald Park, around, you know, just general Wimbledon area. And I just want to know is this being looked at? Is anything, can anything be done? Um, you know, our children now uh, feel completely unsafe and they don't want to go, you know, they don't want to hang out in the park and, you know, it's bad enough as it is with the lockdown. Um, it just seems like the word has spread that Wimbledon kids are a soft touch and they're going to get iPhones, money, you know. Okay, look, I I'm not the MP for Wimbledon. But I wouldn't want you to stop you asking your question or getting an answer. So we'll see where we get to. Bob, is it over to you? Right, I, I'm happy to answer a couple of those questions to start with. First of all, more yeah. patrol. 
Um, everybody always wants to see more patrols. What I can say is that we have a fine team out of Collier's Wood. I've got Lessie, Ingrid and Dave. Um, two of those officers were standing outside Springfield School on the gate of Springfield School on Wednesday morning. Um, we are out patrolling. They are out, they're out on their bikes all the time. Uh, if you do see them, please do wave at them. They are always out. They're all, they spend an awful lot of time out patrolling and they are very good at that, at what they do. Um, they weren't there on Friday because the school was pretty closed. Um, we also have um, had some extra patrols in the area just to provide some reassurance, uh, just moving some people around from various different areas. Um, it's, it's something we are very concerned about and we are trying to put as much officers' time as we can into the areas we feel they can do the most good. Um, on the subject of the probation office, uh, that came up earlier, it's not something that is a police matter, so to speak. Um, I know that Giovanni's taking that up through the probation services. Um, and finally, the answer about the Dundonald question. Uh, I am aware that obviously that's a Wimbledon issue. Um, we have got Wimbledon officers who are working extremely hard, um, both in Dundonald and across various areas of Wimbledon, to look at where people are being targeted, where any crimes are occurring, especially the robberies, as you've said. Um, it is something that we are doing an awful lot of work with using the, there's a mobile CCTV camera van that I've got driving around, doing a lot of work. I've got a lot of plain clothes patrols. I've got some uniform patrols. We are targeting the people who are doing that. We've got work going on to identify them. Uh, and we are working on that exact subject. And it's not just Dundonald Ward. It's across bits of Dundonald. And the robbery, has increased, robbery rate has increased for Dundonald Ward and into Wimbledon Common and Wimbledon Village. We are doing a lot of work with our various different teams, various different partners, try and improve that area. Um, uh, Bob, would it be all right if I bring in Elizabeth now? Yeah. Elizabeth, over to you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Bob. Um, I won't often jump in, I'm, I'm sure. Sorry, Bob, but I just wanted to add a few general comments. So, um, to give you an idea. So, I, as Siobhan said, I look after four different boroughs. So, Wandsworth, Merton, uh, Kingston and Richmond. We've got across at that BCU all of the officers that we're supposed to have um, now but we've put a lot of officers into our response policing so the ones that are in the 999 cars essentially and in my opinion um, as I've taken over as BCU commander at the end of August we don't have enough resources in our neighbourhood teams and so I've made a commitment to Bob and his teams that will add additional resources so I'll be adding 10 further officers across the BCU which hopefully should be a few in Bob's area um, by the end of this calendar year and then in the next couple of months of next year there'll be a further 10 added across the BCU so again a few a few more for, for Bob then so I've got a real commitment personal commitment to neighbourhood policing um, so it won't be large amounts that's, that's not I don't have large amounts of police officers unfortunately I'd love more um, but of those that I do have I'll be adding more to neighbourhoods over the next few months thank you thank you um, and uh, we will we'll go back to the probation because we draw up a list for um, council questions and we will go back to that. Um, Dan, uh, next questions? We've got a lot of questions coming to on. Next is Gary Coatser. And then yeah. after Gary is Dawood. Yep. Yeah. Dawood is Sheila. Okay. Gary, over to you. I don't believe I actually was asking a question. I was answering something to... Uh, to sorry, I must have misunderstood the instruction. So please carry on to somebody else. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes, yes. Dawood, over to you. Hello. Hello, is that Dawood? Hello. Would you like to ask a question? Uh, actually, I'm not Howard, but uh, I have a question. Did you hear me? No, I just sorry, I didn't hear you. Hello. Hello. Did you hear me now? Yes. Uh, how we can protect our children? Actually, my daughter is um, in secondary school, Harris Academy, Wimbledon. She go alone, and she is afraid to go by herself right now. Uh, after last week, what? the happens and what we shall do I cannot uh, go with her every morning and afternoon with her. this is the problem 
Uh, it's more police over there, or I don't know what to say. Okay, thank you, Jawood. We we certainly answered that one. one. Sheila. Oh, hello, Siobhan. Hi. I just, I just wanted to know if it was normal policy to let out uh, sex offenders and paedophiles uh, after they've been charged and served their sentences. Is it normal policy to let them out into the community? Okay. Uh, and uh, over to you, Bob. Um, first of all, for protecting children, um, I appreciate the difficulties involved, and it is a very difficult subject. Um, our school teams are out with the schools, they are providing some advice. Uh, they're in the schools themselves, talking to the children in the schools and giving them some advice about how they can look after themselves, how can they improve their safety. Um, I can say that these, things, these kind of incidents are incredibly rare, which is why they become so newsworthy. Um, they, because they are so rare, and when we do can stop these people doing them, uh, so in that case, he was arrested fairly soon, he's currently in prison. Uh, the police are extremely good at catching people when they have committed these terrible crimes and taking them off the streets. Uh, so they can be placed before the judicial proceedings. Um, they are incredibly rare and that it is such a rare occurrence, which is why it becomes such a good news story for the newspapers. Um, one of the things that's being put forward is things like rape alarms is an easy thing to carry. Um, you can get them a couple for a tenner off of Amazon. Um, they're something that's very sensible, easy to carry, leave it in your pocket um, while traveling to and from school. It effectively, the people who are doing these kind of crimes, they prey on the vulnerable. They're looking towards targeting vulnerable people. Mm. They've got a rape alarm in their pocket. They can then press, that creates, people then look at that, and that's something that the suspects who are doing these kind of things really don't like. They don't being looked at. They don't like creating a scene. So that's one of the really effective things to do. Um, I have discussed that with the schools team um, this morning. Uh, they are, they, they think that's a good thing to look at. Um, just a way of improving our, our safety. So that's a, one of the first and easiest things. One of the other things is walking together in pairs, twos or threes, uh, find people you can walk together with. Uh, very generally, people who are targeting these kind of, um, the, the suspects who are doing these kind of crimes will be looking for a single individual who they feel to be vulnerable. So they're targeting a vulnerable officer. Um, effectively, it's some of the things we can do. Um, I've just got somebody coming up on the chat bar who says they were so it. If they want to step in with some expert knowledge and they can confirm that they were so it, I would appreciate that. Yes, that's me. My name is Claudia. Uh, I am a SOIT officer. I'm attached to a uh, safeguarding in Lambeth and Sadak. Please feel free to add some comments. I, I have to say I have trust issues I'm sure you appreciate um, because I can't confirm who you are right now, but please feel free to comment. Okay, I, I just don't want to show my face because uh, my daughter attends the school, so I just want to keep privately. However, if uh, later on somebody wants to talk to me in person, I can give my details to Daniel and uh, please feel free to ask me. So, um, I am a SOIT officer. That means that um, I work in a unit called Sapphire. What we do in the unit is that we investigate sexual offences and my role as a SOIT officer, SOIT stands for Sexual Offences Investigative Trained Officer, is to deal with the victims of this type of um, um, incidents. Um, so then normally in every sexual offences case, you're going to have two people dealing with the case. One is a detective constable who's going to deal with the whole investigation and mainly dealing with the suspect and somebody like me that we specialize in dealing with the victim. So every time that you read on the newspaper that the victim has been supported by a specialized officer is somebody like me who does this type of role. So then we offer all the um, support that the uh, victims are going to need and um, we do referrals for the emotional support. There are lots of groups out there and depending on the age, the um, uh, type of incident and the place where the victim lives. So we tailor the best um, support that they can get. Somebody said that, the, I, I read on the questions on the chat, uh, to um, create a fun, a fund for this support. I can guarantee that my colleagues from Kingston, they are dealing with, with it already and all these referrals have been done. So the whole family has been supported because 
one of the things that we have to uh, consider is that when there is a child is a victim of, the, of these crimes, the victim is not just the child, it's the whole family and the community. So then all, all the um, support that they need is there. Um, actually, I was working that day at the Haven in Camberwell and I, I received um, a call. So then um, if anybody um, wants to know that if, if the victim has been supported, um, the, 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 the question is yes. Uh, what to do in order, uh, I mean, I'm going to repeat myself because this has been said. I think move on uh, a bit. I think we need to move on. Um, thank you for that. If anybody does want any further support, um, if you email Siobhan, Siobhan will forward that email on so that we can provide a bit of extra support. Apologies, I've got to cut you off. I yeah, no, it's fine. We're halfway through already and there's a lot of other people who've got questions to ask. Thank you, thank you for that. But I think we need to move on slightly. Yeah, thank you, Claudia, and thank you for the work that you do. And um, Bob, would you mind just refer asking, answering Sheila's question? Because Sheila may be under the impression that the person that you um, charged was allowed out. Okay, I'm not going to talk about any of his previous history. Uh, that's, no, that's no, no, I'm not asking you to. Um, so, as an individual case, I'm not going to say that. Um, what I can say is that. Um, if somebody's done their sentence, then they become a free person. Anybody who has got previous history of various different types, and I'm not saying anything about that gentleman, uh, because I'm definitely not commenting about what he may or may not have, because there's a lot of misinformation out in the media about a lot of his previous history. Um, but what I will say is that people who are being supported in the community through, through the probation services um, are provided with an awful lot of assistance uh, Reoffending rates are going down, and that's one of the things that we're really interested in as the police to make sure that reoffending doesn't happen as much as we possibly can. Uh, people are monitored in the community in very different forms, but I'm not saying anything about whether or not that gentleman was monitored or was not. I'm not going to comment on that because that would be inappropriate. Thanks, Bob. But in this particular case, when when he was charged, he's been on remand since then. He hasn't been released at any point. I'm under that impression, yes. I'd be yeah. very, very surprised if I was told he wasn't in prison right now. That's, yeah. all, that's all the information I've got is that he's currently on remand, and I'm very strongly of that opinion. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Bob. And our next question is Dan. Uh, we've got lots of money to run. We've got Jackie next. Um, and after Jackie yeah. is Radoslava, and after Radoslava is Christine. Okay, Jackie, over to you. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Jackie Fromberg, uh, one of the admins of Collierswood News and Views Facebook group. And um, we had a particularly distressing day on Tuesday, and I just thought I'd like to read a short statement out. Um, maybe the police would like me to email it to them afterwards because we seriously feel that something is not quite right with communication here. So, I'm going to read you this out, so please just bear with me. Collier's Wood News and Views, which is a Facebook group, reaches 10,000 residents and has consistently supported the Safer Neighbourhood team and routine pub routinely publishes Merton Police communication. Sadly, direct contact and input have been lost. We need a go-to available contact for these rare incidents that require rapid official guidance. We do not mean by that a social media contact that relatedly issues press releases after the fact. From what we can see, all community police information and updates are on Nextdoor, which has a membership of 950 members. This doesn't make sense, and we feel that the police are missing out on an important community link of possibly 10,000 local residents. Having no police presence on Collierswood News and Views means that the admin team are having to work without support from police and are having to moderate and make decisions on what can be allowed as non based police investigations. We were under enormous pressure and criticism during this incident for not publishing and having to delete the many tweets and rumours circulating, creating a loss of faith while waiting for a police statement at all. Our inability to inform forced members onto unmoderated groups 
and Twitter for information, thus increasing the misinformation circulating. We appreciate and desperately need police support in regard to informing, informing our members. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you for all you do. Can, uh, Radislava? Have we got Radislava? Christine? Hello, it's Christine. Hello, Christine. Hello. Um, my concern is that my daughter goes to a merchant school and no information was communicated to their school with regards to this incident. But I was able to get information from a Sutton school because, I mean, with the best will in the world, you say that you don't want to identify too much about this case, but it has been identified the school that this child goes to and, and the police have visited that school and given information to the girls there how to, to, to um, safeguard themselves with like scream alarms, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it would be more appropriate if they visited all schools within the area, like Merton schools and all Sutton schools. So that way it will just be gen a general thing so that nobody can actually identify where this girl actually goes to school. So I think that, you know, I think that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Christy. Uh, we got Radislava. Okay, Bob, if you, um, over to you, if you're... Okay, um, first of all, the lady from Collierswood News Group. Um, Leslie, can you put up your mailbox group for me, please? Uh, chuck it onto the chat bar for me. I've got Leslie, who's one of the fine dedicated ward officers for Colliers. Uh, she'll put up her mail group box. Um, and so we can start some better communication there between yourself and the ward team. Um, I appreciate there was obviously some difficulties with the communication. Uh, I'm sure you appreciate that in a fast investigation where we're doing everything we possibly can, we have to be very careful what we say when. Um, and while I appreciate an awful lot of people would rather we said a lot more than we do, we have to be very careful, again, not to make sure that we don't create disinformation. Um, I appreciate that the amount of information that was out there on various different forms of social media was something that did significantly concern me. I was doing a lot of work trying to look at all of the stuff to do with that and how we could control diff various different forms of media um, and various different bits of information. Uh, I was working with the investigation team to look at how we could best maximize our chances of catching the person who did this. Um, and it was something that we did look at and we are looking at and reviewing how we pass on that information and how fast we can get information out there into the news via our appropriate processes. But it's something that is being reviewed for how we can quickly pass which bits of information to whom uh, through various different forms of press lines through our central organisations. But we have to be very careful about exactly what information we do put out there because we can't put information out there that we don't guarantee to be correct and we also have to look at the implications of what information we put out there, that if we put this bit of information out there into that bit of the public domain, is that going to have a negative impact somewhere further down the line as part of the case? So for us, everything is always prioritising getting the case and making sure we catch the person and then building a watertight case around that, rather than some of the media stuff that we would really like to help with the community and get more information out as quickly as we can. But the priority for us is always looking after the victim survivor in these cases and getting the person who's done them. are in their thoughts. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, Dan, who, who would like to ask a question? Uh, next we've got Michael and Christina, that's a joint question. Michael yeah. and Christina, followed by Des Cope. Yeah. After Des is Sean Miller Rodriguez.
along well, thanks, Des. Good. Yes, this question is really for Bob. Um, first, um, our daughter, um, we live in, in Merton, in Long Thornton, and we're, in, we're sort of like um, right next to um, Lambeth, so you've got Lambeth School, which is sort of like adjacent to us. Um, she sort of like goes to school in Lambeth, so what we do, we have to travel from Merton to Lambeth, and really, um, number one, the schools haven't really been told, well, the school in Lambeth that she goes to hasn't really been told about this attack, because I, it's, it's, she's um, year seven, year six, and, she, and, she, and they haven't been told regarding the attack, because it was all coming as news towards me about the safety. And I think it's vitally important for, for the police to go in at, at primary and to speak to the primary schools in Lambeth, as well as Merton, to, to inform them of what's going on in terms of safety, being safe, and, and, and as what Bob, some of the stuff that Bob spoke about earlier on, I think that's vital. I know that you don't cover Lambeth, Siobhan, but um, for Lambeth it's important because we're across borders, same kids, same family, same same people. And it's important that everybody knows um, the importance Thank of community you. safety. And yes. also, and also, I just wanted to know how are we getting on, what, what's going on in terms of profiling and CCTV? Well, okay, thank you, Des. And Miss Rodriguez, I'm sorry to be formal, but I'm... Hi, Siobhan, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for organising this evening. Um, so I guess since March, you know, most of us have been working from home. And I guess part of the reason there aren't many adults on the streets in the mornings uh, while the kids are going to school is one of the reasons. Um, have you given any considerations into, you know, using the local communities, parents or local communities to come out during the day? Although I don't have a, a school going child at the moment, you know, I'm quite happy to give up my time if it means protecting our children. So, you know, I just wanted to know if that was a thought to use us while we work from home. I've been working from home since March, you know, and if that was a call, I'm more than happy to give up my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, over to you, Bob. Um, okay, thank you. Um, let's start with the polls uh, by a certain group who were saying they would be up for in Mitchum. Um, I'm very loath to support that. Uh, and those groups specifically that were on various different Facebook pages. Uh, we did have some challenges on Tuesday evening with people who were patrolling and looking for um, various different people, um, which created some issues for us. We do have some street community workers um, who are out doing some voluntary patrols. It's something that we're looking at, it's something that we're considering as an organisation. Uh, so in the longer term, that is something we can look at. Uh, one of the other things, people can always join things like the MS, the Special Constable. Uh, that provides support to the local community. That's a, a very effective way of volunteering and giving support to the local community and preventing crime in various different forms. So that's something that we are definitely looking at. As I say, the street patrolling is something that is being discussed at a higher level than my pay grade. Uh, and it's something that may come in. If it does, then obviously we'll be in touch with the local community and saying, we'd really like to support this, how can you get involved, etc, etc. Um, yeah, the patrols by the officers on the board. Um, our dedicated board officers are exceptional, as I say, I've got several of them on this phone call right now. Uh, they are out patrolling, they are doing the necessary bits and pieces, they are out on their bikes, on foot. Um, the schools officers in all the schools um, are out patrolling, they are out speaking to people, they are providing uh, support, they're providing advice. Uh, they're providing lessons in various different forms of safety uh, and giving general consideration and, and helping people. Um, I appreciate the concern and the suggestion that we should go to some of the Lambert schools. We have to balance between what we can say um, with, and passing on appropriate information without creating a fear. So those lessons do still continue to happen. Uh, they are happening in all the different schools and I have been liaising with our schools officers who will be liaising with other borough schools officers, especially in the media area, to provide a bit of extra reassurance, to provide a bit of extra support and the extra lessons that have been suggested. Uh, unfortunately, the, the comment you made about what's going on with profiling CCTV, I think I need a bit more of, an, of a question than that. Unfortunately, I can't. That, that's quite a wide question. Um, I'd need a little bit more before I can answer that. So apologies that I haven't answered that question properly. Uh, I, I need a slightly more directed question than that. Um, 
Elizabeth, have you, did you want to come in and say anything? Hi, John. Um, sorry, um, I um, am trying to put lots of things on the chat to try and pick up as many of the other questions. Um, but Billy endorse what Bob said. So what I've been saying on chat is, look, there are a lot of different ways that the community can get involved. And I'm, I'm just so um, impressed and, and thankful to everyone on the call and on the chat who's mentioned that. Um, we have we have various different schemes available, and I, I would suggest if you use the email address that um, was put on the chat earlier for Collier's Wood, they can funnel questions in the right um, direction about how to get involved in those things. So um, parental support in the area is absolutely brilliant, and, and I think by working together all of us, we, we can um, you know, return uh, Mitcham to a really safe place. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I've had a message from Dan saying there's a lot of people who want to ask a question. So what I will suggest is that I'll take five people now. Thanks, Did you say, Dan? Susan Magini is first. Yes. Yeah. After Susan is Amanda Afotu Agay. Yes. Yeah. After Amanda is Stacy. Yes. Yeah. After Stacy is Tinny. T i n y t. Tinny. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the last person is Lee. Lee Fallen. Lovely. Okay, over to you, Susan. Hi, everybody. Siobhan, this question is for you. I know because of COVID, um, they introduced the school service and non school service on the buses, but I live around Pollard's Hill and it's getting quite dark at the moment. But the some of the bus drivers, I won't put all of them in the same bracket, but some of the bus drivers, they're leaving our children behind and hence some of them are forced to walk. And because of what's happening, I don't know if there's some kind of collaboration that can happen and, you know, so that it's changed. Uh, you know, they shouldn't have to leave the children behind when they're going to school. I don't know if anything can be done about that. Thank you, Susan. Um, Amanda. Hi, Siobhan. Yes. Um, question. So first of all, it's, I'm not sure if there's any um, teachers on the call here for the Singlegate School. Um, my concern is that obviously uh, during lockdown we've got parents that work from home, parents that have to attend work still. So children are, have been given permission for me and Paul to come home on their own, which is a big concern for me. Um, so is there anything that we can do? I mean, I know that you asked part of the question, I should say, as a community, as parents, to these children going home because despite the incidents that have happened there are numerous children I see when I'm going in the point and coming home in the evenings that are not very streetwise they're in near four or five and they're just sitting targets a lot of people in the area and around know that these children are coming home on their own because there's parents have to go to work some of those parents are not home for these children to come home to so it's waiting a month or two months to look at what plans are in place for a community is too long okay thank you Amanda Stacy. Hello. Hi, Stacey. Hi. Okay, so some of the questions I was going to ask before have been answered somewhat. But what I wanted to touch upon was the fact of Bob did touch on and say that initially that these incidents are quite rare. But um, what I don't want us to do is take our um, eye off the ball in terms of these are things that do happen. So although they're rare, they are happening. And we're also aware that not everything makes it on the news or to the media. Um, there are also concerns potentially that there could be other girls who may have experienced um, attempts or t being spoken to or approached that may not or equally not reported it to the police either. So I don't think it's good to somewhat trivialise what's going on at the moment. It's a very serious incident and um, as I said before there are people that may have experienced it beforehand. So we need to know what is going to be put in place long term, not just for now because we're in lockdown, because obviously we're aware that yes, that could potentially be an issue for the short term, but the long term is these in, these incidents could still continue. So, what are we putting in place um, for the long term, long foreseeable future? Also, yeah. what I also wanted to touch upon as well is I know Bob also mentioned about the remand and on Bell. Now, obviously, where we're all part of this, and we're all concerned. If, the, if, if this defendant was given bail for whatever reason or anything like that, will the community be made aware? Because when it comes to sex, sex offenders, I'm not saying he's a, he's a sex offender because I don't know the nature of it, or paedophiles, 
that it's not disclosed to the community. So we, we're living amongst paedophiles and sex predators and we don't even know. They could be our next door neighbours and things like that. Is there any information without naming people that we can be aware in our area, for example, your local vicinity? How many sex offenders have been registered within that vicinity? Because I think we have a right to know. Okay, thank you, Stacey. And um, Tinnit. Hello. Hi. Hi, then. Hi. A couple of questions. First of all, this happened at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, as a parent, I speak on behalf of a lot of people. I was appalled that my daughter goes to a secondary school and we got a message at 3 o'clock knowing that the children would come out at 10 to 3. Now, that felt their duty of care towards our children and the safeguarding towards our children because the children had already left school and made their way home at that time. We should have been notified easy midday this was on social media. So I feel that your, your duty of care um, with the schools was appalling. I have got in touch with my daughter's school and several other schools in regards to detentions. Children do deserve to be punished if they do something wrong, but I don't feel that detentions or after school punishments in the winter months is the correct procedure because once that child has been punished, they have got to make their own way home. And this is isolating that child. Um, in regards to this case and the rape itself, I think it's appalling, but as a parent and many others, we are concerned as in the stabbings, the stealings and the violence that our children are going through and the rape, that yes, they have got to go to school. Yes, even with this COVID, we are supporting each other, but our children are becoming victims and not a lot is being done. When we go to the schools in the morning, the police officers and the teachers are on the gates, but come home time, not a lot of them teachers and the police officers are on the gates. And the change from primary school to high school is such a big change that not a lot of the parents are interacted with the schools unless it's bad news. We're not, we don't know who our children go to school with, we don't know other parents. We don't mix, in primary schools they have Christmas events, they have different holy, different events and I don't feel that we mix with other parents. So if there is an issue, parents can't say look your child is nasty to my child and maybe this is why there is so much crime nowadays because the children try and sort it out amongst themselves at this age thank you very much um lee hello can you hear me okay yes perfect thank you um first of all a bit of a query and also a question I'm a self-defense professional and, and I know this is my second and, and, and safety plans to small businesses and the public. Uh, now, I constantly engage with schools and my team's constantly made the schools in our borough and connected boroughs and the response is not great because it's happening on the streets regarding knife crime, bringing gang into the and obviously sexual predators, um, sexual offenses. Uh, As they said, no offence, you know, what we cover is a lot more advanced than the advice that the police is giving now at the moment. I mean, they even talked about maybe looking into updating their tools. I'm ever so sorry to interrupt me. Is there any way that you could put your details in the chat and perhaps Perfect. have a bit of a, a longer conversation, perhaps with the police Brilliant. or myself? That might work, work better yes. than right now. Okay, so okay. really okay. Really okay. Really okay. Really you. Dots. So if I can get someone to take my details and actually yeah. open up a conversation later yeah. on, that would be perfect. So that's going to be okay. top of us today. Okay, thank you for the time. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Uh, Rob, over to you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, let's start with some of the longer term safeguarding work that's going on. Um, we do an awful lot. We have a fantastic team of safeguarding officers um, who look after various different people. They provide support and reassurance. They support provide investigation. They look at integrated defender management. Uh, they work with the council, with the so social services. They work with the probation service. Um, people who are um, have previous cases of sex offenders, they are some of the lowest we have we offenders um, in any part types of crime because of the work that is done. So I appreciate people would always like to know more about some of the people who are in the community who we may choose we wouldn't rather have in the community. But unfortunately, it's much safer for those people to be looked after by the police, reducing their reoffending rates. 
and providing a lot of extra support and assistance and checking both from all various different forms that then does provide a significant improvement in their safety if we publish information about where people are and who people are who have got previous histories uh, that then what that often does is it makes people go underground it makes them hide um, and then they go into different places and use false names anything to try and avoid being in any risk and any danger so the most important point for us is trying to prevent re-offending from our safeguarding teams our jigsaw teams they do a fantastic job of preventing any further re-offending and reducing re-offending rates i'm not saying anything about this case i'm not saying whether he is or isn't um, or whatever forms of criminal background he may or may not have i'm not going to comment on that because that might be considered prejudicial to the case. But what I can say is that um, people who are sex offenders have got a, a significantly reduced reoffending rate because of the work that our specialist team do. We provide um, advice support to the schools. We've got schools offices in every senior school. Uh, they're giving talks um, on a frequent basis. We give the talks to the junior schools. We give the safer neighbourhood uh, our safe neighbor team gives range danger talks. Uh, my officers from the neighbourhood team that are in all of the primary schools. I appreciate the comment there that we see school PCs standing outside the school gates first thing in the morning. They are out in the evening as well. My three will often, they will often be out in plain clothes at different times. The schools themselves will know who, and the school children themselves will know who their school's officers are. I frequently see a couple of our school's officers in various different places, Tesco, Sainsbury's, um, in the town centres, where they're watching the school kids. The school kids know who they are because they recognise them and they are providing that support and that presence to help to support the schools and prevent, help to support all of our school children. Um, I want to say I'm not trivialising the number of cases that we have had. We have had, these are terrible incidents. I can say there aren't many of them. Um, they are incredibly rare and we throw a lot of resources at catching the people who've done any of them. So when there has been a serious incident in Merton and in anywhere else, we throw resources at it. We absolutely go after the person who's done it. And the most effective way of reducing further offences is when anything does happen, is for us to be assisted to catch the person, inform us, tell us about it, support the prosecution, work with us, and we can take the nasty people off the streets. That is by far the most effective way of stopping further offences is catching people and putting them behind my bars. And that's something we work incredibly hard to do, and I'm very pleased with the work we do on that. Anything about the time between the timing of the incident and when the press stuff went out or when schools were informed? Uh, yep, thank you. Um, I had discussions with the schools team um, quite early on about exactly what we wanted to pass on to who. Uh, we were discussing that and we were looking at the safeguarding side of things. Uh, we had a lot of conversations, we had a lot of discussions about exactly what we wanted to pass on to people to provide that safety and provide that reassurance. Uh, it was passed out before most of the schools had been um, ended. I appreciate we had got a few that were missed, but also what I don't want to do, and one of the things that we were discussing was if we'd have been able to catch him before that, then obviously that side of things doesn't then need to be passed out to all the schools. Uh, in slightly in quite that fast time. What we did do is, as I say, I had conversations with our schools teams, uh, both the schools within the council and within the police, and we did pass on immediately that we got the, 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 the guy had been arrested. That was part of the schools first thing in the morning and circulated to all the schools. So I appreciate there are some timings and we would always try and do things faster. But to us, the most important point is the investigation and catching the person, getting them off the streets. And that is the best way of saving, helping the community to get back to normality and to reduce that risk and reduce that um, the concerns is by catching him. So we were concentrating all of our efforts on getting him caught before we did anything else. And that's why some of the delays were in place. It is something we're reviewing. We're looking at exactly what the protocols were. We're passing various different bits of information through our media team. We're doing a lot of reviews as a result of what happened last week. To look at how we can improve our timing how we can improve those messages to go out faster and in a more appropriate manner. But we do have to be very careful that everything we say has to be considered, examined as to how it will have an effect on a court case or anything to do with the investigation. And for me, the priority is always go for the investigation because that's what matters and that's what has the most effect for the community. Thanks, Bob. Um, Dan, you're saying that we've got quite a few questions left. 
Yeah, we've got lots of questions. I think we can maybe summarise quite a few of them in one go of written questions, if that's helpful. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So a lot of people, Bob, have written in um, the comments about safety and, and the steps that could be taken to stop this kind of thing happening again. And so Sona asks about more CCTV. And Avashi asks about school buses in the morning. Melissa asks about community wardens. And Tam asks about safety in parks. And Mass asks about lighting in parks. Valeria asks about more police on the streets. And Doreen suggests rape alarms are provided for school children. Um, I'll go through quite a few of them very quickly. I appreciate I've got Kieran on the phone um, from the council, so I'm kind of stepping on her toes. Yeah, we'll, we'll take we'll take Kieran after you. I'll, I'll, I'll bounce that through anyway quickly. So um, CCTV, the council is looking at spending a million quid in the near future uh, to improve and update some of our CCTV cameras. Our CCTV system across Merton is phenomenal. Uh, we have direct links immediately through the radios to our CCTV control room. They're listening to our radio channel. So if an incident occurs, the CCTV team will immediately move the cameras in the right direction. The most important point to us with everything is pass information to us. Tell us what's going on. That's the best way we can move our controls into the most areas they can have the greatest effect. So if you see anything that's going on, if you see problems, if you see risks, if you see dangers, um, that's the thing that pass the information to us through 101, through the mailbox, through 999, through Crime Stoppers. Information passed to us, we will then look at it, we can then direct our resources to the areas that they have, that they will have the most effect. Um, CCTV is not this wonderful panacea. I don't want to see it as being this wonderful solution to everything. CCTV doesn't stop offences happening, it helps us to convict people afterwards. So that is something that's really good, but please don't believe that CCTV has that much of an effect of stopping all crime. It does have a very good effect, but it doesn't necessarily solve all problems. Lighting I'll very come, quickly come through. Um, lighting is something that we are looking at, we're discussing that with council. It's a council um, are working with the councillors, uh, there's going to be walk around, talk around with Yvonne and some other people including the police. Um, unfortunately, lighting people creates the fear of crime. Sorry, it, it makes people feel safer, but it actually creates crime. So because you can't necessarily light up all of the areas in quite the right way, because without just destroying all forms of woodland and all forms of parks, um, it often creates a false sense of security while actually reducing security and increasing crime. It's something we were discussing at the two o'clock meeting. Um, it's something that we discuss frequently with our designing up crime experts, the people who are real gurus, who know everything about how we can reduce crime, how we can design out crime in various different forms. Lighting sounds great, it looks great, but often it actually creates further crime uh, because it doesn't necessarily solve the problems, but it does make people perceive and feel safer, even though it often doesn't have that effect. Um, safety, um, most important points are the people who are doing these kind of crimes, we take them off the streets, that's what has the most effect, and that's always our priority. Um, people who are committing these crimes, they target the vulnerable, they will look towards identifying vulnerable people who are walking alone. So if people can walk in pairs, then they don't appear as vulnerable to the suspects. Um, if people aren't, have got carrying a rape alarm, they're really cheap. I understand that somebody said in the meeting earlier, you can buy them on Amazon for a three for a, a tenner. Um, fantastic. Um, I'm a big supporter of that kind of thing, just to provide a bit of extra confidence, a bit of extra support. If we press a rape alarm, it creates that noise, it makes people look, and that's the kind of thing that suspects, the people who are doing these kind of crimes, really don't like being looked at, they don't like being seen, they don't like being remembered, uh, at which point they're more likely to run away. So it's about trying to prevent yourself being looked at and seen to be the vulnerable, and that's the way that it, we can prevent these offences. Thank you, Bob. I'm just going to go to the council now, um, to um, Kieran or to Stephen, whoever is uh, most appropriate. Either of them? Hi, Stephen. I know you've got a meeting shortly, so I am sorry. We can't hear you. Thank you, Siobhan, for, um, uh, uh, for, for this meeting. And can I say that um, I want to thank Elizabeth Chapel as well and Bob uh, for engaging with the council and working very, very closely 
this is a bad incident and, and uh, it's important that the council gets together with schools so we have the secondary heads forum we have the primary heads forum and we'll see what we can do uh, to uh, engage with the schools as well cctv I've, I've got an offer here once covid is over if anyone wants to visit our cctv bank it is as bob said quite impressive uh, lighting I've, I've asked for a review of lighting around colliers wood around the area where this uh, uh, matter occurred. On the probation office by the school, we're in discussions with the Ministry of Justice. They are the organisation that decides where probation offices go. I've got two counsellors who are the worst to speak to them about their expertise uh, in these matters and we are supporting Shivor, my counsellors, in getting more bobbies on the beat and I'm sure that Bob and, and, and Elizabeth Chapel will be pleased about that. For those who are concerned about neighbouring boroughs, don't forget Elizabeth is the borough command unit commander for Merton, uh, Richmond, uh, uh, Wandsworth and, and Kingston. So, and I meet her regularly to discuss detection rates. Very worrying. We, we appreciate parents and, and the lack of communication on that day in particular, especially with schools. We will engage with schools in a bigger way on these issues. Thank you, Shimon. And anything about... Um alarms i think earlier on uh karen said that she might look into whether the council was in a position of providing any alarms i mean yeah, i don't um, want yes yeah, so we will look at we'll look at that in terms of working with with schools uh, uh, about uh, uh, those rape alarms to see whether we can make an offer for for schools okay thank you stephen um uh i, I am really sorry to everybody who hasn't had their chance to um, ask a question uh, but if you put anything in the uh, chat box uh, we will uh, make sure we've got your, con your contact details we can follow up I haven't forgotten the issue of the buses um, I get quite a lot of contact about buses uh, uh, particularly about um, taking children to school so I know that that's um, a really really big in issue at the moment so Susan from Pollard's Hill um, I will be on to TfL uh, tomorrow, um, I can um, assure you. Um, so can I thank everybody for attending. Um, over 150 people uh, came on to tonight's call. We had 125 earlier. You don't get people engaging in that way unless it's a really big issue. So I know how alarmed and concerned everybody is and we will do absolutely everything we can. Uh, to tackle some of the issues that have been raised this evening. Um, I couldn't end this meeting, I think, without mentioning Ashanti and her mum and her younger sister. They were the brave family who uh, took the video, uh, which um, helped, I think, to get the young woman uh, released earlier from the attacker. Uh, she was so brave to follow him, to confront him, she was the epitome of community, of who we would want to be in that situation. So I really wish to thank her. I can assure everybody who's contacted me that I will do all I can to help her get the award that she deserves. Um, it may take a little bit of time just because obviously with the trial and that we don't wish to confuse anything uh, and we wish to get a conviction. Uh, but I will not forget Ashanti and I am sure none of you will. So thank you and thank you for taking part.